In recent videos, I've been using the terms hash, salt, and pepper a bit, so I thought it would be a good idea to explain what they are. A hashing algorithm is a complex mathematical function that transforms a string of data into a seemingly random output string of fixed length. For example, these words produce the following hashes. The same input string will always produce the same output string, but if the input string has changed even by just a single character, then the output string will be entirely different. Usually, encryption means to scramble data temporarily until a key is used to unscramble it. Hashing is often seen as a form of one-way encryption, as you cannot go backwards from a hash to work out the original string. You can only go forwards. This is great for storing passwords. Instead of storing the actual password, the hash of the password is stored. When a user enters their password at login, it is hashed and compared to the hash in the database. If they're the same, then the login is successful. This way, if an attacker gains access to the database, they'll only have the hashed passwords, which in theory will be of no use to them as they won't be able to go backwards to figure out the original password. However, in practice, it's a bit more complicated. There are a few ways an attacker can go about decoding a hash. Firstly, since a certain password will always produce the same hashed output, the most commonly used password hashes are widely known. This website will attempt to decode a given password hash by simply comparing it to their database of over 800 billion hashes. So if you use a common password, then you're screwed. This website's database is an example of a rainbow table. A rainbow table, simply put, is a database containing common passwords and their hashes. Secondly, you can attempt to go through and just guess the original password, hash it and compare it to the hash you're trying to decode. If it's the same, well, then you found your password. You can do this through a dictionary attack, guessing common passwords, or a brute force attack, guessing every possible combination of characters. The latter is very computationally expensive and can take a long period of time. So hashing by itself just isn't enough to protect passwords. Websites can further protect passwords by using salts. Salts are short, random set of characters that are appended to the end of a user's password before they are hashed. This will most likely thwart any rainbow table attack, as while cats are cool, maybe in a database, cats are cool, p hash close bracket exclamation mark z probably isn't. Do remember, salts are added automatically after a user enters their password. The user won't even know a salt is being used. Salts are generally stored in plain text along with a hashed output, so the website knows what salt to use when it comes to verifying a login. This may seem counterintuitive as you're telling an attacker half the password. And you're right, brute force and dictionary attacks will still be an issue, assuming the attacker takes into account the salt and knows whereabouts to put it in his guesses. However, importantly, rainbow tables will be of no use. Finally, there are peppers. A pepper is a very short random string or character. For simplicity, let's say in this case, a pepper is a single upper or lowercase letter, for example, uppercase M. So the hash stored will be the product of hashing the user's password plus the letter M. So if the password is cats are cool, the hash stored will be the hashed product of cats are cool M. When a user comes to log in, the password they'll give is just cats are cool. Like with the salt, they won't know a pepper is being used at all. The website will then cycle through every possible combination of the pepper. In this case of upper and lowercase letters, there are 52 combinations. So the website will try hashing cat circle A, cat circle B, and so on until it gets to cat circle M. If one of the hashes matches the stored hash, then the user is allowed to log in. The whole point of this is that the pepper is not stored. So if an attacker wanted to crack the password by brute force, it would take them 52 times longer than without the pepper. This would be a bit tedious for them. Conversely, it would take 52 times longer to log in for the user. But this isn't going to be an issue for the genuine user as it only takes a fraction of a second to hash something. So 52 fractions of a second really isn't too long to wait. In conclusion, there are many different hashing implementations. Many websites will use a combination of both salts and peppers. In this video, I've only used the MD5 hashing algorithm, but keep in mind there are many other hashing algorithms out there. So thanks for watching guys. This was a more educational video over my usual stuff. But yeah, if you liked it, remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, follow me on Twitter, I'm at Satonic, and stay tuned for more hacking videos.